This is huge. So long story short, I've bought a farm, which is like beyond my childhood dream. And when most people hear farm, they think sheep and cattle. Come on guys. When I hear farm, I think motocross tracks, dirt jumps, quad bike tracks, MX-5 drift tracks, dirt jumps, pump tracks. I think a lot of things, but obviously my collarbone is still in multiple pieces. So I, what I don't have is the ability to build and ride jumps, but what I do have is time. So I want to get everything ready on the farm. It's got multiple outbuildings, a lot of acres of land, a lot of dirt, a lot of space. So job one, this is kind of my first project which I'm really excited about is this this is one of the barns one of the many many barns and I'm gonna turn it into an epic workshop bike studio showroom I just want I mean I'm so lucky to have so much space it just feels maybe it's beyond a dream and I actually have to now graft and work out what to do with it and I have the time to do so so this in this video is gonna go from being what was once like I think those, apparently those steels used to hold a grain hopper. And I've already done quite a bit of work with my dad and Jamie. My dad and Jamie have been so helpful. My dad isn't a builder, but somehow knows how to build everything. I was gonna take these massive uprights out and get them gas axed off at the bottom, but are they gonna stay? They're too big to risk falling over. They take the whole thing down, so they can stay. Because the ceiling of this studio is gonna be the roll-in for an entire skate park. <laughs> ben, go up this ladder. Show the fans where the skate park is. Dun, dun, dun. What do you reckon? It's massive. I'm going to have a skate park in a barn. That's going to be job two. But first it needs a roll in and a start area, which is also going to be a ceiling. So I guess without further ado, let's get this farm. My whole life and channel is now going to revolve around a farm and a playground. <laughs> two epic locations. Here we go. Job number one was take down all these steel sheets from the original barn, which just needed unbolting with an impact driver and then just smashing off, to be honest, off of the bolt. Some were harder than others. I obviously struggled being one-handed, so Jamie did all the tossing here. Big job. And then I hired a cherry picker, so cue my dad, Asbestos Pete, to come and take down the sheet. All these rivets and bolts needed cutting with an angle grinder, which is why he's wearing a face mask, because they came down and like, actually smashed to bits every time. These timbers needed chainsawing, and then there was a horrendous piece of steel that was hanging down, which is super dangerous. I don't know why it was ever cut, but Dad put a hoist around it and a winch, so that when it did finally go after loads of grinding, Loads of shaking, loads of wobbling. Oh. It could be lowered to the ground safely, which is a pretty cool way of doing it. I learned something there. And then Jamie got his first block laying lesson, which needed bringing up one course to match the other side and be level. And while we had the cherry picker, we could fill the holes in the ceiling. Next up, the carpenters could get going. So they made up some stud walls outside to go inside the workshop. Coco the dog loved the attention. Then when they brought those in, they used eight by two timbers to go across the entire space with wall hangers to get over the door. 18 mil ply for the floor to support the skate park. 9 mil ply around the inside for the workshop, then they were done. All right, come and have a look. So the ceiling slash floor is in, and this space is massive. I can't wait to get creative and kind of figure out a way to fill this entire place, because it's starting to feel like a workshop, isn't it? It's enormous. And then up this end, we've got a slightly lower mezzanine floor, so that ceiling's lower. The reason being is I need to add a staircase here. Okay, and I want it to go up in one flight which meant it couldn't be as high because then we'd have had to have a return on it. I didn't order enough wood, so the chippies couldn't finish this stud wall, so I've got to do that and build the stairs. But the really exciting bit is when you go upstairs. This can be an epic storage place, but have a look at the size of this. This is the floor we've gained. We've doubled down in square footage by doing this work. Obviously, those metal sheets need putting back in to lock this off. But look, this is going to be the roll-in for the skate park. But in fact, it could be a whole kind of section itself. It's so big. Having walked around up here, I thought it was just gonna be a roll-in. But you could have a mini ramp up here. You could have all sorts. And then look at the potential for just dropping in and having boxes, vert walls, quarter pipes. Adding this is like the best decision ever. It's made a workshop of downstairs, but it's made this roll-in area usable for like, I feel like I'm, a, I'm a, in a band and I could just perform. But before we can get too excited about a skate park, we need to sort out this area. So there's loads and loads of holes and cracks and bumps in this that need filling. But we're going to use screed and do quite a lot of screeding today because this ground actually falls quite far downhill that way. So it all needs bringing up level. If we're going to put a workshop in here and stuff that needs to sit on level, smooth ground. So I've got Jamie here today. Good morning. Hello, mate. We're going to be filling that, making screed, start at the back and run all the way back until it trickles out to nothing and we're level. Big day. 
Let's do this. So what I didn't know is that you need to use PVA and mix it with water and spread that around on the ground before you screed. It gives the screed something to adhere to and stick to that's not dry and dusty. So we sort of took it in turns doing that, brushing it around. I had a cup of tea while Jamie had his go. Then we needed something level to aim for to bring the screed up to. So we put a big timber down and made it bang on level and then fired up the mixer. Eight shovels of sand, half a bag of cement. So it was a four to one mix for screed. Then a bit of water and the cement mixer does all the heavy work, doesn't it? And then barrow by barrow, we could bring it up to the bottom of this 8x2 board, which took so much more than we realised. Honestly, a barrow of screed at one end went nowhere because it was so far off level. So quite quickly, we ran out of materials altogether. And being a Sunday, we had to go to Wix to buy sharp sand and cement by the bag because I couldn't get it delivered in tonne bags, which was a nightmare. My van hated it. We got back eventually and carried on mixing, but Jamie didn't have loads of time left and my shoulder was a nightmare for the heavy lifting. So we did as much as we could, which was almost all of it. And it was definitely level, so I could just kind of tamp in what we'd done. But that was as far as we got. Let's have a look then. That's three days of drying. Yeah, she's gone off. It actually doesn't look that great. It's quite a rough finish. It's level. It's level in both directions, which is the main thing. But it looks... What's that? I left the door open for the first night to let it air and breathe. And it looks like a deer's been in here and walked around. I'm actually not that happy. I'm not that impressed with what I've done. So I'm probably going to have to come up with some sort of second fix finish, maybe self-leveling compound to make it perfect. I'm sure if you're an expert spree screeder or just an average screeder, you'd have done a much better job than that, but I was unable to. The electricians are about to turn up. My mate Kurt to do a first fix where they're going to completely rewire this place and add down lights between a lot of these beams. And they're going to install some plug sockets along the back where the workbench is going to be, perhaps along the side here for charging e-bikes, for the compressor, lights again up here and lights upstairs. So we're going to have a big light bar up top and in the roll-in for the skate park. So that's going to bring a bit of life to the place, but it's freezing. I'm actually panting, it's so cold. The weather has got terrible. Hello, Matthew. <laughs> That's how level the screen is. <laughs> Good luck. Come and have a look. What a transformation. The lights look amazing. It makes the place look so big. That back section, imagine when it's full of bikes. Oh, it's gonna be so sick. And these garage floor tiles are all out of my old house. We brought those over, re whack them down. I've still got to go around the edge and fill in some of the gaps, but this is a proper workshop now. I've managed to do the staircase. I built that on my own. It took me a good couple of evenings, and I said every swear word I know in every language because <laughs> I had to get it up there on my own and it actually didn't fit. <laughs> but it's level, the tread's are level, it's building regulations, no handrail, of course. <laughs> and this is gonna be the coolest. I'm gonna have bikes from there to there. And the best bit is the workshop's just arrived. So along the back, we're gonna put this entire workshop. Apparently this is it, which I'm confused about because it's arrived on one pallet, which gives me the dreads because I hate flat pack furniture and I can only assume that whole thing is flat pack floor to ceiling. But as Ben and Jamie are here, I think many hands make light work. In fact, there's a lot more to do. I think no one needs to watch me hang up screwdrivers, do they? <laughs> So I'm going to shut the door on it, I'm going to bring in all my bikes that I've built, all my legendary bikes from over the years from projects, build the workshop, hang up tools, put some art on the wall, and we'll open it up when it's finished, yeah? See you in a few days. It's better than I ever imagined. This place has absolutely come to life. This is my childhood dream on steroids. I never imagined it would look that good. But Park Tool have sent me tools. Park Tool, you must have heard of. They're the Rolls Royce of bicycle tools. That was always on my childhood dream list. I remember Christmas, I'd always put some Park stuff on there and I'd sometimes get it, but often my parents would go to Halfords and get the equivalent. But now I've got the entire spectrum, the range of bike tools, most of which I have to scratch my head and figure out how to use. But this whole workshop is astonishing, isn't it? I brought it in with a hardwood worktop. Kurt's come back and added these plug sockets so I can tinker on here. And then the original workshop didn't have the right fitting holes, okay, for park stuff. It had different tool hooks. And park stuff's got really clever hooks. They're all different shapes and sizes that they're actually fixed. So I've attached the park tool boards to the tool board of the workshop I bought and brought it to life massively. And the space in here is insane. You've seen the floor tile, We've got random cupboards and things. Like so much space that isn't accounted for. That's yet to even have a sniff of stuff <laughs> other than hub bearing press kits, suspension bearing press kits, and a slide hammer bearing extractor. 
I hope there's a YouTube video on how to use those. Compressors in. This is my Red Bull fridge I've had for years with my frames of mine fixed on it, so I'm on a fridge and I love that, I'm proud of that. There's only what, we only managed to find one can of Red Bull <laughs> around the farm, but I'll do a restock. The Park Tool work stand is impressive, isn't it? It's the double ender, so you can work on two bikes at once. That's Everyone sick. loves that. Then I've got, this wall is yet to be filled, but it's gonna be my Marine Alcatraz kind of timeline, okay? So that was the first ever prototype one that I designed with Marin, tested, brought to life. Marin then had a dirt jump bike. It then went on to the blue one that Ben rides. So when we swap out Ben's, I'll have another one. It then went to this. And then in between, I did that Frames of Mind project. So this is battered from the tricks I did in it. But it's a really cool paint job. Design and Conquer was another one. That's an amazing paint job. And I've left it dirty. I've still got the dirt on there from when I landed the trick. So this wall's gonna fill. And then there's the current white one. So there'll be six on there soon, which I'm buzzing about. If you take many yard paces this way, that was my first ever slope style bike with rear suspension that Saras had made me for X Games way back, I think in 2012, when I did that, when I got third in the Red Bull feed on, that was the medal for it. Which brings me on to this stuff. Trophy, I've never had all of this in one place. So this is a tour, and by the way, me, Ben and Jamie just finished sorting this space out 10 minutes ago. So this is the first time I'm sort of walking around it. Trophies, alongside my Red Bull helmets. There's a few busted ones over there, but I've acquired quite a lot of Red Bull lids over the years. There's all sorts here, from all different brands, but the full faces look mega all lined up, don't they? So sad. That is the business. I can't believe I've got so many. Every single one has to be sent off to Image Design Custom in London, custom painted, and they're not wrapped, they're like airbrushed. Jack and Sammy do an amazing job, but that's how many I've, well, had and crashed in. But I guess I've been with Red Bull for eight, nine years now, so I've hit my head a lot. You need new helmets. <laughs> Pit bike, obviously has a home in here. I need to figure out how to position that. Also, that is part of the original farm building, okay? That's like the grain trough where the chicken feed used to come out of the hopper, I believe. Could be wrong. What could I do with that? Because I'm not going to rip it out of the ground. I'd love someone to suggest a really cool application for that trough. Don't say fill it with Red Bull, <laughs> but I'm open to ideas. And then I've got a few checks on the walls, the ones I'm really proud of, like my favourite UK comp. Then I won Swatch Rocket Air. That was an amazing win for me. Colorado Freeride Festival got me the wild card to then go to Whistler Crankworks. That was my entry to Crankworks. I did a comp in China. Uh, and then the bikes, okay? So this was a really simple, straightforward idea. It actually took me ages to build. Little wheel troughs that are 60 millimeters wide each. Seems to hold everything from my BMX, which needs to come out soon, doesn't it, Ben? <laughs> All the way up to my dirt jump bike. E-bike, there's the muck off bike that I've still not ridden. My Alpine Trail from the other day. But then this one, the Galaxy bike, this has just been moved from house to house as I've moved in the last couple of years. And Ben's been a bit cross with me that there's so many trick bits on this that haven't like been upcycled into another bike. And I do feel terrible because this was a legendary bike. Those cranks, they only made a few of those in the whole world and they've just been boxed up. How it's sick are they? It's a waste, it's a waste. It's got electric gears, like the proper AXS from when that was thing. This top cap, my mate Joe made me, he's a jeweler. That's got diamond sapphires rubies in it and it's made of hallmark silver. <laughs> this was my dream bike, right? Where I got a custom paint job. Funny that that's just been in a box. Shame, really. I might scrap that and do something proper with it because it's a waste of <laughs> precious stones. And then pictures. I, I didn't have many pictures on my laptop in high res, but there's one there from the lockdown trails. That was memorable where I was jumping. Like, somehow I used to have two epic cars. So I got a cool photo. That was actually for a supercar magazine. Me and Lesotho. That one at the end is also Lesotho. It's the little country inside South Africa. I went to a pump track where these kids, I mean, they don't even have TVs. And I did a backflip and they, it was one of the best experiences of my life. Frames of mind when I did those tricks and then I did a bungee jump in New Zealand where I front flipped off it on my bike. Um, pretty special memories, but this place, honestly, is everything I dreamed of and more and the attention to detail we've put into it in the last few days and weeks. Since that last shot when I said, we're just gonna wheel some bikes in here, it's not been the truth at all. It's been so much kind of anal, picky, could that go there? Should that go there? There's more to add. I want to add some Hellfare jerseys on the wall up there. Obviously more Alcatraz frames. I don't know. I'm so stoked with it. This is like, there's man caves, and then there's this unbelievable area that's actually massive. Like my bikes are all the way over there, so that can have its self-contained zone. This can be the clean workshop area that's kind of, you know, like the hospital end, really. <laughs> Separate the two. I could Helmets, I'm never gonna grab and wear because they're old crashed ones, but to come in here, look at my achievements. I mean, Red Bull's one of my biggest achievements. Look at that stuff, the competitions I've won, the memories, the bikes I've done it on, and actually just sit here and work on a bike because it continues. Feels like uh, 
well, it doesn't feel like I deserve it at all, to be honest, it's too good to be true, but I'm gonna take it with two hands and make the most of it, because this was project one on the farm, and my word, has it not been a success. Jamie, we've come a long way from we're screening this floor. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Park Tool as well for the tools, like I say, the Rolls Royce of mountain bike equipment, and I get to now have my bikes running tricker than ever. So what would you do with that trough? I mean, we're back here tomorrow because Kurt's coming back to do a little bit more electrics with an alarm and cameras. Also, I was thinking of putting like a big LED sign up there. That would be sick. You know, like maybe Hellfair or if this place has a name, we could just put the title of what it is. God knows what to call it. But also, the one thing that's stressing us out is that there is essentially too much space. <laughs> if it was yours, would you want this space or would you do something with it, like add a thing? And if you would, what is that thing? Like table tennis, I don't know. Is that insane? <laughs> That's a good insane. idea. That's a good idea. Yeah. What thing? What to do with the trough? Yeah, we're back here tomorrow. Legends.